This part 3, is the last part of my 3 part video documentary series about the beautiful hummingbirds. Like part 1 and 2, this last part has a lot of information about hummingbirds. For this last part I've used the best video clips from part 1 and 2, plus a few new ones. The topics I will cover in this video are, wing beats and flight stability, heat dissipation, feather colors, sexual dimorphisms, lifespan and predators, superficially similar species, in myth and culture, reproduction and the last topic is about feeders and artificial nectar. For those who want to attract hummingbirds to their garden, you should pay special attention to the last topic about feeders and artificial nectar. There are a lot of different opinions about what to use, as in feeders and how to make the nectar. I will suggest that you get in contact with a local hummingbird group, or, visit, join a hummingbird Facebook group, please see link to a very good Facebook group called I Love Hummingbirds, in the description of this video, that can give you some very good advice. What most people agree on, including me is to never use red dye in the nectar or feeders, as this can be harmful to hummingbirds. Now let's start this video with talking about wing beats and flight stability. Hummingbirds have compact, strongly muscled bodies and rather long, blade-like wings that, unlike the wings of other birds, articulate, connect, to the body only from the shoulder joint. The architecture of the wing permits hummingbirds to fly not only forward but also straight up and down, sideways, and backward and to hover in front of flowers as they obtain nectar and insects from them. The highest recorded wing beats for wild hummingbirds during hovering is 88 per second, as measured for the purple-throated wood star, Califlox michelii, weighing 3.2 grams. The number of beats per second increases above normal while hovering during courtship displays, up to 90 per second for the Calliope hummingbird, Stellula calliope, a wing beat rate 40 per cent higher than its typical hovering rate. During turbulent airflow conditions created experimentally in a wind tunnel, hummingbirds exhibit stable head positions and orientation when they hover at a feeder. When wind gusts from the side, hummingbirds compensate by increasing wing stroke amplitude and stroke plane angle and by varying these parameters asymmetrically between the wings and from one stroke to the next. They also vary the orientation and enlarge the collective surface area of their tail feathers into the shape of a fan. While hovering, the visual system of a hummingbird is able to separate apparent motion caused by the movement of the hummingbird itself from motions caused by external sources, such as an approaching predator. In natural settings full of highly complex background motion, hummingbirds are able to precisely hover in place by rapid coordination of vision with body position. The high metabolic rate of hummingbirds, especially during rapid forward flight and hovering, produces increased body heat that requires specialized mechanisms of thermoregulation for heat dissipation, which becomes an even greater challenge in hot, humid climates. Hummingbirds dissipate heat partially by evaporation through exhaled air, and from body structures with thin or no feather covering, such as around the eyes, shoulders, under the wings, patagia, and feet. While hovering, hummingbirds do not benefit from the heat loss by air convection during forward flight, except for air movement generated by their rapid wing beat, possibly aiding convective heat loss from the extended feet. Smaller hummingbird species, such as the calliope, appear to adapt their relatively higher surface to volume ratio to improve convective cooling from air movement by the wings. When air temperatures rise above 36 degrees Celsius, 97 degrees Fahrenheit, thermal gradients driving heat passively by convective dissipation from around the eyes, shoulders, and feet are reduced or eliminated, requiring heat dissipation mainly by evaporation and exhalation. In cold climates, hummingbirds retract their feet into breast feathers to eliminate skin exposure and minimize heat dissipation. To serve courtship and territorial competition, many male hummingbirds have plumage with bright, varied coloration resulting both from pigmentation in the feathers and from prismal cells within the top layers of feathers of the head, gorget, breast, back and wings. When sunlight hits these cells, it is split into wavelengths that reflect to the observer in varying degrees of intensity, with the feather structure acting as a diffraction grating. 
Iridescent hummingbird colors result from a combination of refraction and pigmentation, since the diffraction structures themselves are made of melanin, a pigment, and may also be colored by carotenoid pigmentation and more subdued black, brown or gray colors dependent on melanin. By merely shifting position, feather regions of a muted looking bird can instantly become fiery red or vivid green. In courtship displays for one example, males of the colorful Anna's hummingbird orient their bodies and feathers toward the sun to enhance the display value of iridescent plumage toward a female of interest. One study of Anna's hummingbirds found that dietary protein was an influential factor in feather color, as birds receiving more protein grew significantly more colorful crown feathers than those fed a low protein diet. Additionally, birds on a high protein diet grew yellower, higher hue, green tail feathers than birds on a low protein diet. Hummingbirds exhibit sexual size dimorphism according to Rensch's rule, in which males are smaller than females in small-bodied species, and males are larger than females in large-bodied species. The extent of this sexual size difference varies among clades of hummingbirds. For example, the Malish genie clade, bees, exhibits a large size dimorphism, with females being larger than males. Conversely, the lesbian clade, coquettes, displays very little size dimorphism, males and females are similar in size. Sexual dimorphisms in bill size and shape are also present between male and female hummingbirds, where in many clades, females have longer, more curved bills favored for accessing nectar from tall flowers. For males and females of the same size, females tend to have larger bills. Sexual size and bill differences likely evolved due to constraints imposed by courtship, because mating displays of male hummingbirds require complex aerial maneuvers. Males tend to be smaller than females, allowing conservation of energy to forage competitively and participate more frequently in courtship. Thus, sexual selection favors smaller male hummingbirds. Female hummingbirds tend to be larger, requiring more energy, with longer beaks that allow for more effective reach into crevices of tall flowers for nectar. Thus, females are better at foraging, acquiring flower nectar, and supporting the energy demands of their larger body size. Directional selection thus favors the larger hummingbirds in terms of acquiring food. Another evolutionary cause of this sexual bill dimorphism is that the selective forces from competition for nectar between the sexes of each species drives sexual dimorphism. Depending on which sex holds territory in the species, the other sex having a longer bill and being able to feed on a wide variety of flowers is advantageous, decreasing intraspecific competition. For example, in species of hummingbirds where males have longer bills, males do not hold a specific territory and have a lek mating system. In species where males have shorter bills than females, males defend their resources, so females benefit from a longer bill to feed from a broader range of flowers. Hummingbirds have unusually long lifespans for organisms with such rapid metabolisms. Though many die during their first year of life, especially in the vulnerable period between hatching and fledging, those that survive may occasionally live a decade or more. Among the better known North American species, the typical lifespan is probably three to five years. For comparison, the smaller shrews, among the smallest of all mammals, seldom live longer than two years. The longest recorded lifespan in the wild relates to a female broad-tailed hummingbird that was banded, ringed, as an adult at least one year old, then recaptured 11 years later, making her at least 12 years old. Other longevity records for banded hummingbirds include an estimated minimum age of 10 years one month for a female black-chinned hummingbird similar in size to the broad-tailed hummingbird, and at least 11 years two months for a much larger buff-bellied hummingbird. Hummingbirds can be prey of various animals, insects, other birds and snakes. Praying mantises have been observed as predators of hummingbirds. Other predators include dragonflies, frogs, orbwaver spiders, and other birds, such as the roadrunner. Around the world one can find similar species that are often mistaken for hummingbirds. Some species of sunbirds of Africa, southern and southeastern Asia, 
and Australia resemble hummingbirds in appearance and behavior, as do perhaps also the honey eaters of Australia and Pacific Islands. These two groups, however, are not related to hummingbirds, as their resemblance is due to convergent evolution. The hummingbird moth is often mistaken for a hummingbird. A little bit about myths and culture. Aztec swore hummingbird talismans, both artistic representations of hummingbirds and fetishes made from actual hummingbird parts, emblematic for their vigor, energy, and propensity to do work along with their sharp beaks that symbolically mimic instruments of weaponry, bloodletting, penetration, and intimacy. Hummingbird talismans were prized as drawing sexual potency, energy, vigor, and skill at arms and warfare to the wearer. The Aztec god of war who eats Ilopochtli is often depicted as a hummingbird. It was also believed that fallen warriors would return to earth as hummingbirds and butterflies. The Nahuatl word Huitzil, hummingbird, is an onomatopoeic word derived from the sounds of the hummingbird's wing beats and zooming flight. One of the Nazca lines depicts a hummingbird. The Hopi and Zuni cultures have a hummingbird creation myth about a young brother and sister who are starving because drought and famine have come to the land. Their parents have left to find food, so the boy carves a piece of wood into a small bird to entertain his sister. When the girl tosses the carving into the air, the bird comes to life, turning into a hummingbird. The small bird then flies to the god of fertility and begs for rain, and the god obliges the request, which helps the crops to grow again. Trinidad and Tobago, known as the land of the hummingbird, displays a hummingbird on that nation's coat of arms, one cent coin and emblem of its national airline, Caribbean Airlines. The Gibson Hummingbird is an acoustic guitar model slash series produced by the Gibson Guitar Corporation. During the national costume competition of the Miss Universe 2016 beauty pageant, Miss Ecuador Connie Jimenez wore a costume inspired by the hummingbirds of her land that included golden wings supposed to follow the movements of her arms. However, it accidentally got damaged during the dress rehearsal, and she appeared on stage with a broken, drooping left wing. As far as is known, male hummingbirds do not take part in nesting. The hummingbird's nest is a tiny cup of plant fibers, spider webs, lichens, and moss that is attached to a branch, a forked twig, a large leaf, or a rock ledge. In certain species known as hermits, Phthornus, the nest is hung by a narrow stalk from the underside of a ledge or from the roof of a cave or culvert. The nest cup, set on one side of a mass of mud and plant material, is held level by careful weighting of the other side of the mass. The nest varies in size relative to the particular species, from smaller than half a walnut shell to several centimeters in diameter. Many hummingbird species use spider silk and lichen to bind the nest material together and secure structure. The unique properties of the silk allow the nest to expand as the young hummingbirds grow. Two white eggs are laid, which despite being the smallest of all bird eggs are large relative to the adult hummingbird's size. Incubation lasts 14 to 23 days, depending on the species, ambient temperature, and female attentiveness to the nest. The mother feeds her nestlings on small arthropods and nectar by inserting her bill into the open mouth of a nestling, and then regurgitating the food into its crop. Hummingbirds stay in the nest for 18 to 22 days, after which they leave the nest to forage on their own although the mother bird may continue feeding them for another 25 days. Some people like to put up feeders to attract hummingbirds to their gardens, but this can be a two-edged sword. In the wild, hummingbirds visit flowers for food, extracting nectar, which is 55% sucrose, 24% glucose, and 21% fructose on a dry matter basis. Hummingbirds also take sugar water from bird feeders, which allow people to observe and enjoy hummingbirds up close while providing the birds with a reliable source of energy, especially when flower blossoms are less abundant. A negative aspect of artificial feeders, however, is that the birds may seek less flower nectar for food, and so may reduce the amount of pollination their feeding naturally provides. White granulated sugar is used in hummingbird feeders in a 25% concentration as a common recipe, 
Although hummingbirds will defend feeders more aggressively when sugar content is at 35%, indicating preference for nectar with higher sugar content. Organic and raw sugars contain iron, which can be harmful, and brown sugar, agave syrup, molasses, and artificial sweeteners also should not be used. Honey is made by bees from the nectar of flowers, but it is not good to use in feeders because when it is diluted with water, microorganisms easily grow in it, causing it to spoil rapidly. Red food dye was once thought to be a favorable ingredient for the nectar in home feeders, but it is unnecessary. Commercial products sold as instant nectar or hummingbird food may also contain preservatives or artificial flavors, as well as dyes, which are unnecessary and potentially harmful. Although some commercial products contain small amounts of nutritional additives, hummingbirds obtain all necessary nutrients from the insects they eat, rendering added nutrients unnecessary. As this third and last part of the three-part video documentary series of the wonderful hummingbirds is coming to an end, let's watch some wonderful still photos of the fantastic and beautiful hummingbirds. I would also like to thank you all for watching and I hope that you found this third part of the hummingbird video documentary series just as inspiring, entertaining and interesting, as part 1 and 2. If you haven't already watched part 1 and 2, I can highly recommend those two videos as well, so that you have all the beautiful video clips and information about hummingbirds.